that your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. Don't worry. God is in control. Think of how often we say those words to each other. Don't worry. God is in control. I'm sure you can think of certain times that someone has said those words to you, I'm sure you can think of certain times that you have said those words to one another. For whenever we don't understand what is happening in this world around us, whenever we don't understand what is happening in our own lives, whenever we are struggling and have a cross to bear, we say to one another, don't worry, God is in control. And that's good. It sure is comforting to know that everything that happens in this world isn't just random chaos, but there is a God who is in control of absolutely everything. But can we say even more than that? Can we give even a little more comfort than the fact that some divine being, some place, is in control of everything? After all, the ancient Greeks and Romans thought that their gods were in complete control, and a Muslim thinks that Allah is in complete control, and they aren't always comforted by that truth. And so in order to receive even more comfort, let's talk about why God is in control. Let's talk about why God does what he does either in this world or even in our own lives. As our text points out, God is in control. Also that his son could be born and make you God's children forever. For did you notice when God's son was born into this world? Did you notice the time when he came into this world? St. Paul wrote, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. You see, it wasn't by chance that Jesus was born when he was born. It wasn't by chance that Jesus was born during the Pax Romana, a time of relative peace. It wasn't by chance that Jesus was born in a time where Rome controlled so much and so a lot of people understood the common language of Latin. It wasn't just by chance that Jesus was born in a time where the Romans had a road system so that made travel a whole lot easier. But as God was planning out the entire world, he picked the perfect time, the exact time when his son would be sent into this world. And think about the control that our God had to have in order to make his son come at that perfect time. He had to be in control of empires and kingdoms, raising up the perfect peoples at the perfect times so that they could do the perfect thing. In fact, if you read the second half of the book of Daniel, that's what it's all about. It's all about the kingdoms and empires that God is going to raise up and put down so that his son could be born at the exact perfect time. In addition, he had to be in control of all science and technologies to make sure that his son could do what he was sent into this world to do. And finally, he had to be in control of life and death so that the right people were in the right place to either crucify Jesus on the cross or to see him win salvation and be brought to faith through that truth. Yes, God had to be in control of everything, every little solitary detail, so that when that perfect time arrived and God could send his son into this world by being born of a woman, his son could do what he was sent into the world to do. He could redeem you from all your sins. That's why the God's son is born. It's to be your redeemer. 
For as St. Paul said, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. Do you see why God had to be in control of everything? To make sure everything was just so absolutely perfect when his son was born into this world? His son was coming into this world to do some pretty important work. He was sent to be your redeemer. To be the one who would buy you back from your enemies of sin, death, and the devil. That's why Jesus is born. It's to redeem you. To buy you back. Only he doesn't use gold or silver. All the gold and silver in the world wouldn't have been enough to buy one person back. Let alone the entire world. Instead, as you well know, God's Son had to use His holy and precious blood. And I think that's important to keep in mind as we celebrate Christmas. You see, as we celebrate Christmas, we can all get caught up in this sweet little scene of a mother and a father and a baby lying in a manger. We can easily focus on how cute and cuddly that baby is. We can easily think that that baby is going to have a peaceful life. For after all, Christmas is a time of peace. And who isn't at peace when they're holding a sleeping baby in their arms, right? But that's not why this baby was sent into the world. Not to have a peaceful life. He was born into this world to be your redeemer. To be the one who would buy you back with his holy and precious blood. Yes, this child is born for the sole purpose so that he could die. He took on flesh and blood so that he could give up that flesh and shed his blood in order to redeem you from all your sins. For you needed a substitute, someone just like you. For someone had to die in your place for all the sins that you committed. And so God sent his son to be born of a woman, to be made like you in every way so that he could be your perfect substitute, so that he could be the one who would die for your sins, redeeming you from sin, death, and the devil. And now that God's Son has completed that work of redeeming you, know this, dear friends in Christ. God, well, he's still in complete control of absolutely everything so that you can receive what God's Son won for you, your redemption. After all, that's all this talk about being adopted as sons at the end of our text, right? For St. Paul wrote, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem us under law so that we would be adopted as sons. And this whole adoption as sons has nothing to do with you being a male or a female. It has nothing to do with a position of inferiority, as some people try to claim. But this whole talk of being adopted as sons, it's about receiving eternal life in heaven. You see, in St. Paul's day, sons were the heir, right? Sons received the inheritance. And so when God's son completed his work of redeeming you, he made each and every one of you sons, whether you're male or female, Because he made each and every one of you an heir. An heir that will one day receive the inheritance of eternal life in heaven. That's why God's son was born of a woman. It's why he took on human flesh. It was to redeem you from all of your sins. And in order to make sure that his son could complete that work of redeeming you and making you his sons. God controlled absolutely every single detail, all so that everything could happen at the perfect time. And now that God's Son has completed his work, what is God doing now? He's still controlling every single detail, just like he was before his Son came into the world, all so that you could be made his sons and remain his sons for all eternity. Just think of the control that our God still has over this world. 
He is controlling empires and kingdoms all across the world, raising up the perfect people as the perfect time to be the perfect leaders, even if that person is anti-Christian or a persecutor of Christians. Because God knows exactly what each country needs so that as many people as possible might be brought to saving faith in Christ. In addition, God is still in control of all science and technology, making sure that as many people as possible can be driven to his holy word for comfort. I think that's been driven home this year. For not only has God allowed this virus to linger on far greater than any one of us thinks he should, also that people can be driven to the word, which is the sole place of comfort in time of need. But on top of that, think of how he has used technology so that people are still able to hear the word of God when they can't gather in person or don't feel comfortable gathering in person. What a blessing that is. And finally, God is still in absolute control of life and death. Not only does he keep people alive, also that they have another opportunity to hear the word and be brought to faith. Not only does he keep people alive so that they can be a wonderful example, a light shining in this dark world of sin. But on top of that, God may even take your life or the life of one of your loved ones much earlier than you think he should. All because he can't wait to give you that inheritance which he won for you. The inheritance of eternal life in heaven. Yes, my dear Christian friends, just as God was in control of every little detail, so that at the set time, the perfect time, his son could be born of a woman and win redemption for all. So also right now, God is still in control of absolutely every detail in your life and every detail that is happening in this world right now. Also that you and as many people as possible can be brought to saving faith in Jesus through the word so that you can receive what he won for you, eternal life in heaven. Do you see the comfort in knowing the why? of how God is in control of absolutely everything. And so, my dear Christian friends, on this Christmas day, don't worry. God is in control. No matter what is happening around you in this world right now, no matter what seems like chaos, no matter how different your Christmas might be, don't worry. God is in control. And he's not just controlling things without any rhyme or reason. But he's controlling everything for you. He controlled everything in the history of the world so that his son could be born at the perfect time. And he is now controlling everything in the history of the world for you so that you can be made a son of God for all eternity. Yes, take comfort. Don't worry. God is in control. And since God is in control of all things... You can be certain of this one glorious truth. You can be certain that you have been redeemed by the blood of God. And therefore you will one day receive the inheritance of eternal life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by singing another Christmas hymn from Paul Gerhardt, hymn number 40.